Hey, I'm Ryan. And I'm Megan. And in today's video, we're going to discuss 10 things your business can do when you're scrambling to hit your revenue numbers. We produce these videos each week. If you love our content, please like and subscribe by hitting the big red button below. If you've been in the internet marketing business long enough, you know that there are a lot of ups and downs to being an entrepreneur, and this economy that we're in right now is all part of the joys of entrepreneurship. But tough times are inevitable in business, and back when my colleagues and I were really going through it in 2019, we got by by a little grit and a little humor. We actually dubbed 2019 hashtag times are tough. We'd walk around, we'd joke, we'd go to lunch and conferences. Oh, you better do that because hashtag times are tough. So here are 10 acquisition and monetization tips to help your business win hashtag times are tough. Number one, publish a flash renewal. If you're a subscription business, this is a great idea. This is the quickest and easiest way to make extra money. Let's say you're halfway through the month. For example, we are right now, it's nearing the end of July. Uh, putting together a buy one, get one free offer, a holiday specific promotion, free shipping offer, et cetera, to get people excited is, again, one of the quickest and easiest ways to make some extra moolah. Number two, slap a deadline on an existing product. For example, maybe you have a physical product and you're running out of inventory, slap a deadline on it, a uh, deadline price saying you're going to price hike a product in a certain amount of time. These are just two of many examples you can do to say, hey, get in on this valuable offer, this valuable product before X specific date. You can set that date for whenever you want, maybe the end of the month to really, again, boost that revenue. Number three, be more open to third-party sends. So if you haven't tested third-party offers to your email list, and what I mean by third-party offers is offers or products that are not yours, but might sell well to your demographic, to your geographic, uh, if you haven't tested these offers to your email list before, now is the time. You can make just as much money and sometimes even more money if you send third-party offers to your bio. Number four. Host a live event or webinar. This is definitely more time intensive, but it can pay off big time if you do it right and you have a very targeted select audience. One of the things you should be really thinking about if this is a road that you go down is within the webinar and within the product that you're offering in that webinar, uh, what are you offering to the audience that's, again, going give to give the audience deeper access to that guru? more high risk, high reward types of products uh, to justify a higher price point. You know, what type of content uh, and opinions and, uh, you know, valuable insight can you give your readers and your consumers? Again, that gives them deeper access to that guru, to that product, solves a problem that they didn't necessarily think that they had. And number five, bundle more products. So take one existing product and sell it with a group of other products, bundle it together, and then send it to your best buyers. We just had a call with a client the other day who wasn't segmenting her email list by her best buyers. And this is a million dollar opportunity. You wanna segment these people and sell them more high ticket items because they're already your best buyers, have the highest lifetime value. They're more willing to whip out their credit card than some, are, some of the front end buyers that you might have. So segment those folks, bundle products, and sell them more higher ticket items. Number six, <clears throat> cut the fat in your marketing budget. Outside of salaries, a direct response business's biggest expense is generally your marketing budget. One way to do that is to transition, if you're on a rev share, you're paying out affiliates on a rev share, is transition them to a CPA model or a guarantee partnerships only model. This will actually save you money in the long run Another thing you can do is cut your testing budget. Now, we don't want to get rid of all your testing. Definitely don't do that. But look at your testing budget and possibly cut some of that down. Number seven, assessing lifetime values. Know what you can afford to pay an affiliate and adjust if necessary. In a recession or a downward economy, 
you may want to analyze your lifetime values at a minimum every quarter or even every month. Knowing your numbers more accurately is going to save you money in the long run and short run. Number eight, focus on new buyers. There's a 15 to 20% overlap of email addresses in our industry. If you don't have a way of knowing if you're bringing in new buyers, find one. You don't want to be paying publishers to advertise to people you can advertise to for free. Makes complete sense. Number nine, get rid of extra inventory. This is especially for your physical products. When you have a surplus of premiums or old products from past promotions, create a new special promotion to sell them at a steep discount. This is going to give you less revenue per unit, but more revenue overall. And again, not having those just extra excess inventory sit in a warehouse, that makes you zero. In fact, you lose money on that. And finally, number 10, review your autoresponder series. Ensure that your best-selling products are introduced early, in, early on to the subscriber. People are more likely to purchase another item after they just purchase something. Once we have that credit card out as a consumer, we always want to buy more earlier on. So again, we look at your autoresponder series and don't be scared to adjust it on a regular basis. Some of these items should be done regularly, not just through hard economic times. But many of these basic things can fall between the cracks because we're working so hard on the next thing, right? The next big thing. We're trying, we're so trying to get that. Um, but in the end, some money is better than no money at all. So hopefully these tips will bring you a little bit more money and help you ride through these poor economic times or any bad economic times in the future. But also, even when times are good, watch this video again. There's, it's always still good advice.